Well, hey guys, welcome to this Nomadic Idea Show where we discuss the uncensored truth about full-time living on the road, whether you are an RVer, van life, or schooler, schooly, it doesn't make any difference. This show is for you. We stream this show every Sunday night on our YouTube channel, This Nomadic Idea, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You can catch the audio version of our podcast on thisnomadicidea.com every morning. Monday morning, 7 a.m. usually, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, run all of them, and you can catch your audio version. Our audio version is always longer than our video version. On our 28th show, we talk about the RV storm cloud that's coming, and it is coming. What should you know about the RV market? that big manufacturers are just not telling you right now, it has a lot to do with the supply chain. Should you prepare for even higher costs than they're already right now? I'm gonna talk about that. What is the average cost in the US that people spent on RVs last year? This is gonna blow you away. And is there a difference between what the average older generation spent and the millennial generation? Yeah, there is a big difference. We're going to, we're going to tell you those numbers. It is a storm cloud that's coming. We're going to kind of share about maybe what you should prepare for. The economy doesn't seem like it's going to get better anytime soon. Inflation, higher gas costs. Let's get ready to do this. This is not a drill. Repeat. This is not a drill. Shall we begin? Shall we begin? By the way, we want to welcome uh, a partner to the show, Escape Caravans. We love these guys. We've seen these camper vans, and this is probably a good time to rent a camper van instead of going in debt and buying a camper van. They've got some really cool vans out there. Hell, we've seen them all the way up here in Yellowstone. That's where we're coming to you from this week's show, Yellowstone National Park. If you don't need to own a camper van, you can rent one. You can rent one for your next road trip adventure. Escape camper vans will inspire people to escape their everyday routines and embrace their adventurous spirit by exploring the world in their camper vans. I'm gonna put a link right below here. Go ahead, the link is on the post on episode uh, 28. So for the audio people, just go ahead and go to that uh, episode on this little Mac idea and click that and take a look at that. Okay, so before we get started, I wanted to give everybody kind of um, a heads up on what's uh, going on, uh, blah, 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 with Ariane. Ariane's looking for people for full-time work at the Yellowstone Trading Post, okay? It's 16 bucks an hour. Now, we have already hired two couples that are full-time RVers. Um, and so they've already secured a spot in a very, very small RV park here in Cook City, population 72. And so they've already got full-time work. They're going to spend the whole summer here and they have free housing. Uh, please contact Ariane at or general manager at Yellowstone Trading Post at gmail.com. That's Yellowstone Trading Post at gmail.com. Put this nomadic idea podcast so she knows where you're coming from. Uh, you might help to enclose a resume and what experience you have. This is just a retail store. It's full-time only. You gotta work full-time, okay? Um, and you probably qualify for uh, some, some possibly free housing and get paid. It pays 16 bucks an hour. Uh, we are four miles away from the northeast entrance of Yellowstone National Park and about 20 minutes from Lamar Valley. Um, so it's a very beautiful area. Uh, the benefits, you get two days in a row off and possibly free housing, a place to park your van or small V. If you don't, they have community housing. So they've got about six different uh, rooms in the Yellowstone Trading Post that have community kitchen, shower, kitchen. It's a, it, you know, it's, it's a good gig. So anyway, if you're interested, let Ariane know by Yellowstone Trading Post at gmail.com so all right so we want to talk about this because this is a, a pretty serious topic 
I think there's a huge storm cloud coming and I think things are going to change. Um, things tend to change overnight in our economy, in our country, um, very, very quickly. And uh, what I'm what I want to talk about, I'm not a financial advisor. I used to be one at Prudential Insurance many moons ago. Um, I do watch the markets um, and I do listen to um, people in the industry and what they're and what they're saying. Um, and so I'm going to read you uh, a couple things from the RV Association. And uh, you know they're, they're, they put out some statements about their forecast for 2022, and they put that out last year. So, and they haven't updated this forecast yet. And I want to kind of delve into that a little bit and say, you know, I don't think so. And so we want to talk a little bit about that too. So, um, the first question I have for you is, how much debt are you in? And I think debt is going to be a huge factor in the fall of 2022 and possibly the spring and summer of 2023 and why why is that because interest rates are going to raise and i think debt as far as what we normally went into considering what we're going to go into is going to be a key factor in the nomad um travel industry and in your lifestyle on the road it's huge um, that is a question i think we need to ask ourselves because there's a storm cloud coming and we predicted this on this show probably about i don't know maybe 10 shows ago uh this was last uh this was last spring and we talked about you know the high cost of gas prices are they are they taking you off the road now you know, everyone's going to argue that says, well, we, we're making more money now. You know, the cost of, uh, you know, hourly wage, um, your wages have increased, but wages have only increased 5%. Inflation has increased by 8%. So it's still a deficit. And so, yeah, you're making more money, but you're also, you're, you're also spending more money to be on the road. And so we talked about that a long time ago. Um, and, you know, we don't have a lot of, um, we don't get a lot of views um, on our video podcast. We get a lot of uh, listeners on our audio, but you know this is the time to start spreading the word. This is the time to start, you know, sharing videos like this, so you know we can kind of be prepared for this storm that's coming. I think the storm is here. Um, you might have a little little bit of time, but I, I think the storm, I think the, the storm is here. Um, uh, is debt is that going to cause a huge sell-off as people trade being in debt versus holding on to their RV payments? And I'm going to say, yeah, it is. So, and I'm going to explain why I think that is. Um, and this is going to blow you away as far as what the average cost people went into debt. This is the average cost between. 2020, 2021, the average cost people went into debt buying an RV. And then I'm gonna give you some amazing statistics of those who bought those RVs and what category they, they fall in. Uh, the average cost of a fifth wheel, people financing a fifth wheel in 2021 was $70,000. That is the average cost of people financing a fifth wheel in 2021. The average debt that people who bought RVs in 2021 was $74,000. And that age group was the younger age group that would be considered millennials. They went $74,000 in debt to travel full time on the road. And that doesn't include any other campground fees, um, you know, gas, anything. That's just to provide the the home on wheels. Now you're saying, well, that's that's cheap. Seventy four thousand dollars. That's nothing compared to buying a house. The problem with that logic is that that is debt that you have that you are making that payment 
um, on your RV and the way the industry is going, I don't really see the cost per month. You might save money on the on your housing, but but you're still going to pay a whole lot more for for RV parks, especially because most of these RV parks now are becoming corporate. So that's the average debt that people are in right now just for an RV, just for an RV. That doesn't include any other car, that doesn't call, that doesn't include student loans, that doesn't include uh, anything else that you have as uh, a loan that you're paying for. That's just for your RV. That's a lot of debt for people you know, that are going on the road and trying to save money from buying sticks and bricks. Um, you know, you've got campground fees and gas, which is, you know, gone up exponentially this year. According to RV Life, and this is huge. Now, I've talked to them on Clubhouse before. We had this huge conversation about, you know, who's buying RVs and what's the difference between boondocking and people that are spending time at RV parks and what and what that difference is. Only 1% of that total population, 1% that have bought and have gone into debt and have bought all these RVs are boondocking ready. So it's a very small crowd that are going out to, you know, these BLM lands and other areas that they can camp for free full-time. Very, very small percentage of people. Almost 90% of new RV owners, here's a, this is a huge number, over 90% of new RV owners are part-time. Part-time. They're not full-time. It is a, it's still a very small, even though there's millions of people on the road, a lot of those are part-timers. It's still a very small number of people that are living in their RV full-time, okay? And even that changes. Um, according, now, and this is huge. Now, I can't express, I can't really, um, I can't express this enough and how important what this is, what I'm about to say. If you want to clip this part of the video, that's what you should do. According to the RV Industry Association, the new forecast projects 2022 RV shipments, shipments. These are not RVs on the lot. These are, these are RVs that are being manufactured and being shipped to RV dealerships. The new forecast projects 2022 RV shipments to range between 578,000 and 603,000 units with a most likely year end total of 591,000 units sold. This is projected off slightly from 2020, which is a uh, 1 and 1.5 percent loss from the previous year. Not a big deal from the 600, 240,000 shipped in 2021. But still, the second best year on comparable record. Now, this is a forecast. This was, this was forecasted a year and a half ago based on what 2020 was and 2021 was. This was a forecast. Okay, it's important. This is, this is the important part. Inventory restocking by dealers and continued consumer and continued consumer interest will boost shipments in the first half of the year with growth rate with growth rates easing in the latter part of the year as the market normalizes. So what they're what they counted on a year ago is that there was going to be continued consumer interest. Now my question to you is, do you think the market is normal right now? You think everyone's happy with everything that's going on? You think the market is normal? I can guarantee you this is what's going to happen. You're going to start seeing a sell-off of debt. You're going to start seeing people selling off 
They're seventy-four thousand dollar fifth wheels, hundred thousand dollar fifth wheels, three hundred thousand dollar class A's, because it's debt and interest rates are rising, and then you're gonna start start you're gonna start seeing these RVs being sold off. I already start seeing them now on on certain Facebook groups. They're being sold. People are people are smart. People are seeing the writing on the wall with higher gas prices, higher food costs, higher travel costs, higher campground costs, higher, 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 everything, and they are selling their off. They're gonna sell these off. Why, why, why are they selling off right now? Because it's a seller's market. This is the time to sell. This is not the time to buy. This is the time to sell. So if you are upside down on a fifth wheel or a camper trailer, or class A because you financed it. Now remember, you're buying an interest rate. You're 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 you know that that money that you're paying. You, you know you finance seventy four thousand, but really you're financing you know ninety thousand. Okay, so you're going to start seeing that sell off. In the meantime, all these all these pre orders, all these RVs that were part of the, the supply chain problem that's going to be inventory and you're going to see a huge drop in the market and in the RV market. You're going to see so many RVs at dealerships, they're not going to be able to get rid of new RVs. Used RVs? Absolutely, but not new ones. Debt is going to go away next year. The, you know, we we went through this in 2007 and 2008. That is really kind of where I believe the tiny home craze and the RV craze actually started when everybody had two or three homes that couldn't afford the mortgage. You know, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mae, they dumped. You know, we had to bail out the, the mortgage companies. We had to bail out the car auto industry. Remember, we had to do cash for clunkers. Those guys went broke, right? Well, there's only very few manufacturers that are building and selling RVs. Very few manufacturers, they've all been bought, bought up by corporate companies. And so you're going to see all of a sudden they can't sell new RVs. You watch, you mark my words. Um, so I don't think the market is very normal. So when the RV Industry Association says, we're going to, we're in the first half of the year with growth, with growth rates easing, in the latter part of the year as the market normalizes. Well, I got news for you, the market's not normal. Um, you know, again, we went through this in 2007. This is just, uh, in my opinion, history repeating itself. And so um, I think it's, it's a good time, everybody, to really start looking at your debt and really looking at, you know, your, your travel plans. I'm, I don't think people are gonna cancel travel plans um, but the three biggest sectors that have fallen off this last month in the market are retail, food, and housing. Um, those three sectors have dropped, and that's usually kind of a sign of people saying, whoa, wait a minute, I'm going to start saving my money a little bit. I'm going to start pulling back in, you know, the buying everything and going into debt and having all these loans. I'm going to start pulling back. And when that happens, the dominoes seem to fall after that. Um, I think the worst time right now is to go into debt. This is but the worst time in the in the worst time right now is to buy a new RV. You know, I would go buy used. And in, in if you're planning on a full time lifestyle, maybe this is a good time to hold off until the middle of 2023, when I believe it's going to be a little bit of a buyer's market instead of a seller's market and just kind of holding off a little bit and saving that extra cash, saving that extra money. Yeah, I mean, you know, it might it might suck a little bit to have to work a, a little bit longer. It might suck a little bit to have to, you know, um, put your plans on hold a little bit longer, but you are gonna be smarter for it and it's gonna be well, well worth it. Um, I, I, I think it's a really time to have a strategic financial plan for a nomad life, um, instead of just hitting the road without one, I, I just I, I think our economy is just um, a little volatile, volatile right now. Uh, we still have supply chain issues 
but most importantly, we're going to have, you know, um, inflation is not going to go anywhere right now. It, it's, it's, I think it's going to get worse. I think gas prices are going to probably stabilize a little bit, but that's going to be temporary. And I don't think anybody really knows what's going to happen in the latter part of 2022. So I think it's probably a good time just to hold off your plans a little bit. Do not buy a new RV. Do not buy a new ProMaster van. Do not go into debt. Save your money. And if anything else, offset what you're going to buy with cash you can get a lower payment um you know because you're gonna you're you know you're gonna possibly you're gonna buy a higher interest rate um, but it's gonna be better than being massively in debt um, if we learned anything from the housing market of 2007 2008 2009 where that a whole lot of people lost a whole lot of cash um, and a whole lot of assets so right now i think it's a good time to be a little bit more cash um, savvy than it is to be in in debt for sure so I'm not you know, I don't want to put gloom and doom on the rest of 2022 or 2023. But I just think that the economic times um, are going to dramatically change. And I don't want to see people being a lot of debt. I was there. I lost a lot of, um, you know, I lost a lot of money in 2008 when, you know, I had several properties. I was taking care of my mom. You know, she had Parkinson's and we had a lot of medical expenses and, you know, um, had a lot of assets, but I saw, you know, a house that was appraised at $250,000 not be, not even being, look, not, there was no offer on it at 125000 That's how much the market had, had, you know, sunk. So, and I don't want to see the same thing with, you know, people living the nomad life and the RV life and the full-time life, because I think it could happen. I think you got to be you know, really careful. I, I think the used um, RVs are still the way to go. I think the used vans or the used, um, you know, whether it's a ProMaster or whatever you, you want to call it, I think renovating a schoolie would probably be a great time to do that, um, you know, but without putting you in a debt situation. So, um, you know, I, I, I think we're going to weather the storm. We always do. Um, you know, the market is a seller's market, then it's a buyer's market, then it's a seller's market, then it's a buyer's market. Um, but I know for us, I think the smart thing for us to do right now is like, you know, we, we sunk $3,100 into a, a used van um, instead of buying a new truck. I would have loved a new truck, but I think right now it's the best way to go is, you know, um, you know, fix what you have, don't go into debt, um, trying to maintain, uh, you know, some savings in some emergency funds for yourself instead of making payments and paying all the, the, the high rate of interest because that rate's only going to go higher. And uh, I think you can still travel. I think you can still have a great time on the road. I think it's still very doable. Um, you know, but I don't see people going from uh, place to place to place and hopscotching around the country like they were three years ago. I think, uh, I think it's probably a little bit more wiser to stay put you know, work a little bit, save money, spend. Stay put, work a little bit, save money, and then go out and, and travel. Um, and because, I, you know, I just think that might be a, a smart thing to do. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, in our audio version of the podcast, I can go into a much deeper detail in debt about my own personal experience in 2007, 8, and 9 about being in debt and having uh, properties and being overextended. And I talk a lot about what our country went through and a, li a little bit about my personal journey through that and, and, and why I don't like being in debt or, or in a lot of debt or overextended debt uh, when the storm cloud does come. So anyway, you're more than welcome to listen to that. I'd appreciate it if you did. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up or at least post a comment. I, I love 
I love your comments. Whether you agree, disagree, it doesn't make any difference because right now we're all going through this together. And the best way to get through it is to have an open and honest dialogue about what everybody goes through and what's happening in their life. So I appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and we will see you next week. We'll talk to you later. Bye.